Welcome back. Now that we uh, covered conditionals and loops in the previous videos, we can talk about list comprehensions. Uh, a list comprehension is a shortcut to create lists where each element is the result of an operation. A list comprehension, um, inside list comprehensions, we use for loops and if clauses uh, to create a new list. Um, therefore, we had learn about loops and conditional first before we um, could cover this topic. So let's get started and see how to define a list comprehension. So a list comprehension is defined within curly uh, within square brackets, and inside them, first we have an expression followed by a four clause, and then zero or more um, four or if clauses after the first the the first one, and the result will be our new list um, that is uh, what we what we get um, as a result from evaluating the expression in the context of the for and the if clauses which follow it. Uh, let's see an example. Um, and uh, in the first example, we will start using only one for loop. So let's create a new file. I'm in Visual Studio Code, if you are wondering. Uh, so let's first define our shipping. So I select the Python pre interpreter and let's save it. Uh, what is YouTube Python? And here we got list comprehensions. Okay, let's see. Let's uh, first define a list, and I'm gonna call it skills list. And it's a list of strings. And CSS three and one more. Uh, okay. And then let's um let's first uh, define a skills message so let's um let's do that um Let's create a new variable with this create with the skill message msg if I can type. So um, let's start by defining a new list, and then uh, we want the first thing that we want to uh, write inside the square brackets for the list comprehension. It's a <clears throat> Uh, is an expression. So let's say that we want as a final result a, a string which says uh, format and I'll see what we want inside it later. So let's first use the placeholders and then okay this is the, the first bit of how to define a list comprehension. So we first have the expression. Uh, so the result of what we want uh, from a for loop. So for uh, we define now the first for loop and we are going to 
uh, see in this example how do you use this compression with a single for loop. So for let's say index and skills. So I want to grab as my result the uh, number of the position of the element and then the element itself. So I say index, uh, so to grab the number and skills uh, to grab the element. And then in here, I will use the enumerate function. So we can grab this, the index of the element from the skills list. So this way, I am going to create a new list which has a result um, of this expression. So inside the inside the curly brackets for results, we want to grab the index starting from number one. I mean zero, but this is zero based. But I want to get one, two, three, four, five. So I would say index plus where is the plus plus one, and then the other element is going to be the skill, not skills. Okay, and Let's see what we got if we print now this skills message. So let's print it out and execute our code. And we got this new list. <coughs> so <coughs> the list comprehension returns a new list and we store the new list inside this uh, variable and now we printed it um, so as a result we got uh, a list and the first element is one which is the index here that we grabbed at this point of our expression and then the name of the skill so the description of the skill can be uh, we can say that so, um, and we place it here. So the second argument of the format method, and then we um, have as a result this list here. Let's see now an example with a conditional. So let's write first what we are doing here. With a single for loop, and then here with a conditional. So um, let's add a condition to check if our result matches our uh, uh, desired condition. So, <clears throat> sorry, um, let's say that we want. Um, Let's wrap this um, list comprehension inside a print function so we see the result straight away. So let's say that as a result we want, let's start from the for loop and uh, we want to grab, we want to start from a sequence. So for an in range, I'm using the range function to generate a sequence of numbers and then I say if n is let's say what we want to see is use the module operation to check if the number that we got is a multiple of two and then if it's not so if if it's not zero so if it's not a multiple of two uh, you see we got inside our id this is highlighted in red because the list compression is written this way is wrong we need the initial expression so what we want to do is say we want to grab the number and let's do an operation let's say we want to grab the number and multiply it by two so if we now print this we got a new list so we have all the numbers from uh, zero to nine <clears throat> but we grab all the numbers that are not 
uh, a multiple of 2 and then we multiply the result by 2 so we got 6 uh, um, so we got 2 6 um, 10 14 and 18 because these are so this is the multiple of 1 so 1 by 1 and then we got a multiple of 3 then we got multiple of uh, 10 and then we got multiple of 14 and then um, the 18 so this is equal to say so 1 by 2 so 3 by 3 by uh, 2 and then we got 5 by 2 and then we got 7 by 2 and then we got the 9 by 2 and that's what I mean that's the same of saying that let's add commas here and then if we print that you will see the same result as you see here so we loop over this range function um, sequence um, so from the sequence generated by the range function and then if it's not a uh, divided by 2 uh, so if the division uh, of the number by 2 is not at 0 we will grab the number and then we will multiply it by 2 so 1 by 2 is 2, 2 by 2 is 6, 6 5 by 2 is 10 <clears throat> and so on let's see another example so Um, using, uh, I mean, in the previous example, we saw uh, that we had first define the expression. Otherwise, we didn't, we couldn't complete the um, list compression uh, because the syntax without this bit is wrong. So we grab, we first start by writing the the expression, and then we say that we want to get all the results from looping this um, sequence and we want to multiply them by 2 and then we start looping inside, inside the sequence generated by the range function and then we use the if close to check if the resulting number uh, of the list was a, a multiple of 2 uh, using the module operation um, using a classic approach you would have uh, been in stand, would, would have been a something like that so um, let's say that we want a result list result mm. So the result list is a, an empty list and then we want to use the range function to uh, write this loop. So we say for, let's copy it, for n in range 10 and then we use the these conditions here to check if the number that we got, so if the n is a multiple, multiple of 2 and then here we said we want to get the result and then result result and then we want to multiply the n by 2 so that's going to be our result from um, so it's our expression and then we want uh, to generate a new list so we want to grab the resulting list and then we want to append here a result and then we print what we got inside the result list so if you see now the third example that we will get by executing this code is the same list but we did this operation using a single line of code instead here we wrote one, two, three, 
or five plus the print uh, line. So it's six lines of code to generate this list from a loop and a condition. Uh, so we did the same thing using the list comprehension and it's much more clear um, and readable. So that's the scope of the of list comprehension. So make it easy for you to create other lists from a resulting a result of an operation. So <clears throat> let's let's see how to uh, do the same uh, using operations. So. Uh, like in this example, we multiplied by two the result of the expression. So, <clears throat> so um, now we could like do something like that. So let's say we want to uh, create a list comprehension, so a new list, and uh, we want to use the same loop for and in range n and but we want to grab the n as our expression so the first bit is the n so as it is we got the list out of this list comprehension so if we print it we got all the numbers from 0 to 9 and we can apply an operation here so let's say that we want to grab the number divided by two, but we want to run it. We will get a new list and we will see that for each number of the sequence, of the sequence that we saw earlier, so this one, we did uh, this operation first, so n divided by 2, and then we rounded, uh, grabbing only the, uh, mm, the integer part of the number, because otherwise you will get, let's print also the same list without the round function. So, you see, list as it should be without the run function is this line and the same list um, using the round um, function so we rounded the number only at its integer so it's zero divided by two is still zero and then we saw one divided by two is uh, 0 0.5 and then we got two divided by two uh, so two divided by uh, yeah two is one and so on until um, we reached nine and that's it's 4.5 and here we got all the numbers using only the grabbing all the first number so the integer part using the round operation and then let's see another example <clears throat> so we can um, get the output uh, as a tuple using uh, using multiple elements so let's see it in action So let's imagine that we have the same the same thing here. So we grab this list comprehension here again. And let's say that we want to see both. So the number that this is um, so the n and this operation. We want to wrap this inside the tuple so we cannot put as a result two elements so we grab the first the number and then we grab the number just without the wrong function so we got the original number and the number divided by two inside the tuple uh, part of a new list so if we run this code now you will get a list of tuples that's the that's it and each element represents first the number so the number of this 
um, sequence of numbers and then we got the number divided by 2 the result of this operation so that's our expression and then we got the first for loop then can be followed by other uh, if or uh, for loops as well and we will see that later so here we got the the number the original number and the number divided by two and so on until we reach the last element of the uh, range function sequence uh, which is nine and then we got the same divided by two let's see an example um, using other operations as you see here we used the we divided the number um, by two but we can do of course other um, operation as well so any operation that you have that you can think of so we want to grab the number and then multiply it by two and then multiply by three and then we want maybe the um, exponent mm, yeah and then we print it and here we have this new list so each element of the list has three elements so inside the tuple so the original element the element divided by two uh, the element multiplied by three and then the element multiplied um, the exponent and of course this is all zero because it's the zero and then we got one zero one five and go we got three and then one and so on until the last one we got nine uh, nine four point five twenty seven which is this number by three and then we got the exponent which is it one nine by nine okay let's move <coughs> forward and see also how to use methods other than functions to perform operation on our expression so let's grab for example with method so um, let's create a viable names names equals to list of names Okay, some random names, and then we say we want to grab a new list. We want to create a new list, uh, performing an operation on the previous one. So let's say user user name users name, and then we have a list comprehension. Uh, okay, we want to perform um the following operation let's say that we have in here a string username and then we grab that from our loop so let's say that we want to grab the form we want to use the format method so we use the format method on uh, as the first inside the expression for our this comprehension and then we say that we want to grab the name and in lowercase and for what for name in names if name is not equal to my name and then okay another if uh, name is not equal to wife name serena okay from name for name okay all right let's print now the result and see our list, user names, 
Let's print it out, running our code, and we see that we got this a list which uh, for each element we have this string uh, that says username and then the username in the lower character. So the name in lower character using <clears throat> because we used this lower method on the result of the for loop. So this variable that we grabbed using the for loop inside the name. So we first looped over this list of names. We stored each name inside the name variable, and then we use two if clause to check if the name that we are grabbing is not the same as Fabio or Serena. And then we grabbed the uh, name here and we converted it into lower cases. And we wrote a string uh, that, which contains this um, word username, a colon, and then we use the format method to output inside this uh, placeholder this variable in lowercase. And we got this list, so we generated successfully this new list using this approach. So we used inside this both um, a for loop, two if clauses, and then we also use methods on the resulting expression. So let's see now an example using more than one loop inside this expression. So For this example, we will uh, use a gay tuples to wrap the expression elements. So we can return the result of two or more loops, like so. Let's first create um, our uh, list comprehension. So we open the square brackets and then we say we want to a tuple of two resulting elements. So x and y. And then we use the for first for loop for, for uh, x in range. And let's define a starting point and the ending point for this range. And then again, we follow uh, the first loop with another loop for y in range, let's say 3. 20. And then in here we use also an if clause and we say if x module y is different by zero is equal to zero. Okay, we want to grab the resulting x and the resulting y. Let's see it. Let's see what we got. Let's wrap first everything inside a print function, otherwise we won't be able to see anything. And then we run the code, and you see we will get this list of numbers. First element is the x, so the result of this loop. And then the first, second number of the expression is the y, so the result of this for loop, but only if they met this condition. So if the x divided by um, y result in 0, so no remainers, we will print the x and the y. And here we got 3, 4, 5, and 6, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, and then 9, 3, and 9, 9. And let's do another example. So, as we saw earlier, we have used multiple loops uh, inside the list comprehension as well as multiple if clauses. And we can also use nested multiple. We can also nest multiple lists comprehension. In fact, the first expression um, 
the first element of the list compre comprehension, the expression, can be also uh, the result of another list comprehension. So let's see how it could look like. So let's create a variable, user status, and then we assign that to a list. And let me copy the list of names and statuses from the nodes. Okay, now let's we, let's create our list comprehension. So user starts. User starts is a new list comprehension. So we say that the first uh, the expression is the result of another list comprehension. So let's create another list comprehension inside the first one and then in here let's write it so um, let's say element at position i or element in the user statuses and then of course this list comprehension is written uh, correctly but we call this variable which is not defined anywhere so this is where we start a new loop outside this first list comprehension and then we write the other list comprehension where we grab the i uh, from a range of numbers let's say up to seven which are the element of our list, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then for i in range seven, and then we simply print the user stats. So let's see what we got. And here we have, we grab the first element of the first a list and then we combine it with the with the first element of the second list uh, so we grab these elements as columns uh, and then we um, write a new list with all uh, elements of each one column inside a another list so we got a we got a list of lists each uh, element of this list represents the first, um, the n element. So the element i here we, we said, so the element at index i, and then we printed that inside the new list comprehension using these other lists, and then we printed the result. So <clears throat> in this way, we use two for loops and nested one list comprehension into the other. The expression of our list in the result of the list comprehension um, takes a specific element uh, of each list thanks to the external for loop that returns the number at each iteration that we can pass to the first list to get the element of the specific location uh, of the element at each iteration. So list comprehension can be very handy once you understand how they work and can also help you writing less code and keep it, keeping it readable. And you can find out more uh, in the documentation, I will leave a link in the description. List comprehension are quite complicated, can be handy, but you need to make some products. I'll see you in the next episode where we will start looking at functions, so how to define functions and how to work with functions in Python. Cheers!